Hello guys and happy Halloween. So today we are going to be doing my third look of the season. For those of you that have a trypophobia scare, uh, this one's probably not for you, but I really wanted to do something like this this year. Really creepy, really gory, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm doing is just starting out with my bare naked face, and then we are going to, of course, as always, we are first going to have a sip of coffee. I got this really cool, epic The Exorcist mug at Spirit Halloween. I freaking love it. Okay, so a little bit of a trigger warning for you guys in three, two, one close-up of the little prosthetic that I have. This is the trypophobia prosthetic that I got from Spirit Halloween. Now, as you can see, up against my face, it is very large. There really isn't anywhere good to put it, like on my face or neck or anything. So I, again, took the risk and decided to cut it into a bunch of small pieces. Now, if you guys remember my first look that I did this year, I also did the same thing with that prosthetic. And I talk about how when you cut something like this, you're really taking away those smooth edges. So edges are going to be something that we are going to have to deal with in this look. Unless you're like, you know, a super pro at special effects stuff, then you could probably hide them. But the edges were quite thick on this prosthetic after I cut them down. So after I cut a few pieces, I made sure that I knew where I was going to be putting them on my face. And then I just used some liquid latex and put that on the areas of my face that I knew that I was going to be applying the prosthetic. And I also put a little bit of liquid latex on the prosthetic itself. Then I'm just using a little handheld mirror to kind of dry the latex a little bit just so it sticks better. And once it kind of turns a little bit off white slash clear, that is when it is ready to go. So I just carefully place all of the little pieces in their designated areas. And I'm going to be honest, I really didn't have like a set plan on how I was going to do this because I thought the full prosthetic was going to fit on my face. But as you guys saw in the beginning, it was quite large. So I really didn't know where I was going with this. I was just like, I'm just going to glue random pieces to my face and take it from there. So after I have the one above my eye and below my eye, I decided to put one on my lower jaw area and kind of on my chin area I guess you could call it and I'm doing the same technique with the liquid latex that I did with all of the other pieces. And then I'm also taking some leftover liquid latex on my finger and just kind of going around the prosthetic a little bit. Now, if you did this enough times and you really kind of dedicated a lot of time into this, you could build up enough liquid latex to the point where you could probably hide the edges. But with just the few coats that I did, they were still pretty visible. But as you'll see later, I tried to cover those up with blood. So, you know. I tried here. I really, I really kind of took this look and just kind of wung it and ran with it. So once all of the pieces were attached and dried, I just went in with some translucent powder. This particular one is by CoverGirl. And I went over top of all of the pieces because once you apply any sort of liquid latex to your face, you always want to powder it right after to get rid of any sort of shine or leftover tackiness. Now, when I did this, there was no stickiness or tackiness whatsoever, so I made sure those were all fully covered. And then I'm just going in with some pretty heavy coverage foundation, and I'm applying that to the other side of my face and the side of my face where I have the little trypophobia pieces. I don't really know what else to call them, so I'm just calling this trypophobia. And let me know down below, do any of you guys have a fear like this? Like, do any of you guys suffer from trypophobia? If so, and you're still watching the video, God bless you. 
After the foundation was on, I went back over with some more powder to kind of set everything down. And then I basically just went in and filled in my eyebrows really quick. There really isn't much makeup to this. I really didn't want to do full out glam. I really wanted the main look to be the prosthetic pieces. So after my eyebrows, I went in with just some eyeliner on my waterline. Now we're going to start working on the little trypophobia pieces again and I'm just going in with these cream stacks that I got from Spirit Halloween. Seriously you guys, these are so cheap and so effective. I absolutely love them. I use them every single year in almost every single look, which I'm sure my OG followers know by now. But I'm taking a mixture of the green and yellows and kind of making my skin look a little bit, you know, gross and diseased, I guess you could say. And I'm just kind of applying that all around all of the pieces that I applied. And then of course I am going in with some bloody scab from Spirit Halloween. No Halloween look would be complete without it. This stuff is da bomb. And I'm just taking kind of a little dofa applicator that I use for blood, I guess you could say. And I'm just kind of putting the bloody scab all around the prosthetics and kind of spreading it inside some of the holes as well. If any of you out there watching are pros at this kind of thing, let me know what I could have done differently to kind of disguise those edges a bit more because that's really the only thing that bothered me about this look is how visible the edges were. I think the best ones were on my lower jaw and chin area. I think I was able to disguise those pretty well, but the other two, eh, I really wasn't that happy with. So after making some of the holes a little bit, you know, gunky with the bloody scab, I went in with just some red blood gel and applied some of that into some of the holes as well, just to make them look a little bit more shiny and bloody and gross and, you know, all the best stuff about Halloween. And then of course, just spreading more blood all over my face, because why not? <laughs> Now moving on to some of the finishing touches for this look. No Halloween look is complete without some contacts. So we are gonna go from my plain brown eyes and we are going to transform into these amazing yellow contacts from Camo Eyes. Seriously, these are hands down probably my favorite contacts that I get every year. I love the plain yellow ones. They're so creepy, so comfortable, and so effective. Next, I'm gonna use just some dead brown face powder and kind of use that all over my face. So I'm kind of just putting that in my lips to kind of bring out the chappedness, chappedness? Is that a word? The chappiness look of them. <laughs> and then I'm also gonna be using that as a, some eyeshadow as well and also some contour to make my face look really sunken in. And then once you have all of your finishing touches complete, go ahead and let your hair down. And here is what the completed trypophobia look looks like. I know this probably isn't going to be a favorite among a lot of my subscribers, but you know, you saw the title, you saw the thumbnail. I think it turned out really cool. I had a lot of fun doing it. Do I wish it could have been better? Yeah. Could I have done better? Probably. But for what I did... You know, I'm proud of it. I think it's pretty cool.
So I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video and hopefully you guys are enjoying my Halloween season so far. If you guys did enjoy, make sure you go down and give this video a huge, huge thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate it. Also, don't forget to go down and subscribe if you are new here. I do upload every three to four days here. But until then, I will see you guys very soon in my next video. Bye, guys. Is anybody still here? Anybody still watching the video? If you are still watching the video, make sure you go down in the comments right now and type Frankenstein. Anyway, the reason why I am still here talking to you guys is because I wanted to include some footage of me taking out my Halloween contacts. Because if you guys saw in the video, I had some pretty long acrylic nails and taking out Halloween contacts with acrylic nails can be a little bit difficult so I did film myself taking them out I have an excellent trick for that so if you're interested here you go here is that footage right now so as you can see I have the contacts in it is time for them to completely come out it is not time for them to be in anymore so the only thing that you do is you take a regular q-tip and you bend it directly in the middle the whole point of this is you kind of want to create like little tongs I like to call them little q-tip tongs like this and very very gently you're going to go to each eye and gently grab the contact sometimes it takes a couple of tries but once you grab it it completely comes out and you don't have to risk stabbing yourself in the eye and I do this for both of my eyes and this technique has been an absolute lifesaver seriously you guys need to try it anyway I just wanted to show you guys that fun quick little tip I will get out of your hair now enjoy me ripping off my face <laughs> I'll see you guys later Bye!